Have you ever wanted to report compiler or Roslyn analyzer warnings as errors? It's pretty simple to configure and I'll show you how. As a bonus, I'll show you a lesser known feature to make it solution wide. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos around software architecture and design and .NET. So if you're into those things, make sure to subscribe. All right, so I'm in Rider, but whether you're in VS Code, Visual Studio, whatever the case may be, anything that can actually run um, that will show you compiler errors or Roslyn analyzers, which a bunch of that I love that I'll show here too, you can get warnings like this. So in this case, this is an awaitable method. The save change is uh, async, and I'm not calling await. So as you can see here, there's a warning, and it's giving me because uh, I'm not awaiting it. Now, this actually just happened to me in my code base that I was looking at. And obviously, okay, I can just go and fix the issue. But what I really wanted to do was to never let this happen in the future. Like, I don't want this to be a thing. So when we build in CI or just locally, I want this to fail. And it's actually really simple to do this. If you, if you look at the actual uh, suggestions by ReSharper or, again, whatever you're using, it tells you what the compiler warning is, and in this case, it's CS4014. Uh, so in order to convert this to a error, it's actually fairly simple. If you go into the project, uh, the CS proj here, uh, for the actual project in question, and bonus tip at the end, I'll show you how to do the solution wide, but first, just for this project, what you can do is in the property group um, where you have this kind of defined, this project, is you can add a um, element here called warnings as errors. It's really that simple. So in that one, this one was CS4014. So if I save that, I come back over and look, and now it's red. And when I try to build, this will fail. There we go. So we've turned that warning that we deem is not a warning. We actually want it to be an error. All right, so the next thing I want to show is the same applies with Roslyn analyzers as well that will produce warnings. So I'm going to use this package to show this. This is the Microsoft Visual Studio threading analyzer. Um, again, you don't need to be using Visual Studio for this because I'm using Writer. Um, and I'm going to add this NuGet package to my project right here. Uh, so I'll save it. And if I jump back over to um, this in question where we weren't calling await. Let's take this off again. So this is producing that error originally. But if we do wait instead, we can see that this is now highlighted yellow because it's actually producing a warning. And this warning actually is from that analyzer. That's why it's called this Visual Studio VS THRD 103. So it's actually producing a warning. So what we can do is the same thing basically is back over in our CS proj, we can add um, that particular uh, warning in question again. So it was VSTHRD103. Save. If I build, there's our error. So it's no longer a warning, it's actually an error again. So one of the rules this Roslyn analyzer also has is kind of a controversial one, I guess, in my opinion, is that async methods, anything that returns a task or task of T, should have a async suffix. So technically this should be called seed async. Now I don't agree with this and because I don't want it to be a warning, I don't want to do anything with uh, that analyzer, I just want to ignore it. We can set that up as well. So I just want to show you now if I actually build this project, um, there's my warning. So this is from the Roslyn analyzer saying it should be uh, you, the use async suffix. So what we can do again is in our project, if I jump back over to the CS proj, to do this, there is a no warn. So this no warn element, and again here, you can specify this um, VS THRD 200. So we can do that, and we do shift F7 again, build this project, and we're good. So no longer do we even consider this a warning. So if there's some Roslyn analyzers, even compiler uh, warnings that you just want to completely disregard, you can use the no warn. All right, so my bonus tip is a way that you can do this solution-wide instead of having to add this to every project. 
And this is applicable for more than just doing warning of errors. It's really anything that you have in a CS proj. And this is really useful for things like package references. And you can see when I get going here. So what I'm gonna do is in, I'm in VS Code, just cause it's easier to look at the entire file structure. And I'm in the root of this project. And when I'm gonna add a new file called directory, dot build dot props and what you're going to do in this file is it's going to look exactly like a CS proj for the most part you're going to have a project root element and then in here I'm going to add a property group close that tag and what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to uh, writer and let me edit back my infrastructure project. I had these in there. Go. So these were the warning as errors and no warn. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these out of the project and I'm gonna add them to this new directory.build.props. I'm gonna comment out my no warn. So it's gonna report um, our async issues but I know there's actually a ton of methods that should use the async suffix based on that Roslyn analyzer. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go back over to Rider and I'm going to reload. All right, all my projects are reloaded. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build. And when I build, we're gonna get a ton of warnings um, related to that no warn that we took out because there's a lot of methods that should have an async suffix. You can see them starting to come up here. Here's all of them. So this is, again, this is project wide. Now, if I jump back over to our build props, I add this back in. So we're gonna ignore those warnings, go back over to Rider. Let's just clean for the sake of sanity here. And then I'll run the build again. And now, all those warnings are gone. We'll probably get a couple different warnings, but they are related to a completely different analyzer. So this one's a different analyzer. So we got rid of the that one particular warning, um, and now we just got these three. So that's how you can do stuff solution-wide. It's probably a lesser known feature using that directory.build.props. So again, look up the docs for that. I'll provide a link in the description because that's really use useful for versioning uh, package references across your entire solution. So take a look at that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And again, please subscribe for more software architecture and .NET related videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.